Hey guys, it's John here from John's DIY Playground. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own soap. Um, I'm going to use very simple ingredients including uh, olive oil and coconut oil as our main ingredients. Um, we have lye which is a very uh, poisonous, dangerous product which will require safety goggles and um, some rubber gloves and long sleeves. So. Uh, please use caution when using that. Um, this is a process that I've done for the last couple years. I started out with this wooden soap box until I finally decided I liked this enough to do it more often so then I upgraded to the silicone mold. Um, there are a few different processes for making soap. Today's method I'm going to show you is called the cold process. It's cold process because I'm going to be mixing the oils together and I'm not going to be heating them up afterwards even though I'm going to add a warmed up mixture of water and lye to uh, make the soap turn into a gel and then let it cool on its own slowly over weeks. There's another process called hot process. It's very similar but you're taking all these ingredients and putting them into a crock pot for several hours or some other slow heating uh, element and just kind of you're helping the chemical uh, experiment along and uh, it takes a little bit more extra equipment so I wanted to keep it simple show you basically how to make your own soap at home um, if you have very very small kids let's say under six years old or eight years old there's another process just called hot melt and pour where you can buy a uh, glycerin based soap and you heat it up and then you just add your own ingredients like uh, fragrance and color and then pour it into molds. So that's, that's something that's even easier and doesn't include the use of lye. So if uh, you have older children or can take precautions with the younger ones, let, don't let them touch the lye or be anywhere near that part, you could do it with them too. We're also gonna add fragrance that's totally optional today, but um, let's get started. I wanted to show you how I figure out if my uh, soap is going to work or not. You can create many different recipes of your own and there's a getting started section on this soapcalc.net website. Um, has lots of different help and lots of uh, good forums, things that you can learn, uh, basic recipes and uh, so on and so on. But um, <clears throat> one important thing that I found from this website is this soap calc lie calculator. And um, this calculator is very important because it, it gives you an idea if your soap is going to be, let's say, good or not and can give you the kind of quality and uh, characteristics that you're looking for. Um, I know it's a little bit overwhelming for first timers, but um, uh, there's two different types of lye. We're going to use this uh, NaOH style today. Um, the next is the weight of the oil step two. and my original soap box used to use 500 grams of oil total. Um, the bigger soap box, that silicone mold I showed you, I figured out over time is uh, 778 grams is about right for me. Um, as far as water, um, as a percentage of the oils, um, this is something you can also click on these little boxes and get more help with. Um, but it tells you what the you know default value is 38. More experienced users go for 32, 33. So. I actually do use 33 at this time for mine. Um, step four has to do with super fatting. The higher number means some more of the oils will be left behind and not really change to soap. Um, fragrance, like I said, we're going to add fragrance. This means there's 3.1 percent fragrance in the uh, in the in the oil, I guess in the soap. Um, I'm going to up that just a little bit to 3.5 percent, which is 35 grams per kilogram. And now. Here's the uh, the different oils you can use to make soap. Like I said, we're going to use two uh, basic ingredients, so coconut oil. We're using one with the 76 degree melting point today, so I add that by hitting the plus. And then the other ingredient we're going to use is olive oil. Um, it's right here, so I can add that in. And then the next thing you have to do is play with the percentages of the oils, and this is a little bit... Um, from recipes you can get an idea of what it's like, a little bit of experience, but um, when I was playing with the numbers myself earlier today for this recipe, I was looking at 36 and 64 and then you hit calculate. And what that does is it populates these different um, values here and it gives you an idea about hardness. If you float over these things with your mouse it tells you what the number range should be. Um, like conditioning and creaminess, iodine. This is iodine in the soap basically. The target is 160 so you can see our soap is hitting 160. Um, it has good values in all acceptable ranges here. Another way to look at this stuff, um, maybe it's just a 
do a printout of your initial stab at it like this if you hit the click or view recipe because what happens is it tells you for those different things what the target ranges are and then what your soap as it stands with the current percentages has as a as a value so hopefully all of your things are within range mine is a little bit low on the creamy side which is okay um, I'm more concerned about this number here the INS number being 160 and I definitely want the hardness to be a little bit high or at least in the range let's say because if it's too uh, low in the hardness your soap goes so fast in the shower that um, you'll be like okay I made this soap but it disappears after uh, you know a week of use so um, those are the things that I look for and uh, the soap calculator like I said can give you a lot of good ideas and about oils and fragrances and things that you can use and uh, how it affects these different uh, uh, soap bar qualities we're gonna go ahead and make our lye water now and you can see I've got a scale here that measures in grams um, I'm going to use a glass container um, tips here a very important tip for safety is never use aluminum when you're making lye water because the lye can react with the aluminum and cause a harmful gas um, it could be poisonous and kill you so very important use glass or plastic um, you can even use stainless steel um, but another tip is with the lye you always have to put the water first the lye is second never add water to lye that can cause a crazy reaction that could make water and the lye shoot up all over the place and you would cover yourself with this uh, very uh, caustic solution that would burn your skin so again very important water first then lye so what I'm going to do is just tear this thing off so that it has um, so it's showing zero grams and then I'm going to add my water my recipe sheet that I printed out is calling for let's see what does it say water is 256 grams so need to get that set up here let me grab this other container that I brought with water close I went a little over so let me switch this back up try again this is the easy part since we don't have the the lie involved yet so I get another shot at it so there's uh, 256 grams of water next we're gonna move on and measure up the lie I got most of the lie prepared we're calling out in this recipe for 112.8 or about 113 grams total of lye so I've got it in this separate container I'm not going to add it to the water right away but I want to get the exact amount that I need here first in this container so you can see just go slow and top it off to right where you need and it doesn't have to be spot on 112 113 if you're within a gram or two that's okay and then the next thing we're going to do is the like I said it can be a dangerous part but just go slowly and that is putting the lye into the water and what's going to happen this is room temperature water <clears throat> there's going to be a reaction and the act the chemical reaction of the lye in water actually is it causes heat and if you put it all in at the same time that can be dangerous because it can make the water temperature go up very high um, so you just kind of stir and uh, add a little bit of the time you'll see the water is uh, cloudy the other thing is there's fumes that are rising up from this so don't be putting your face over this container um, make sure you're in a good uh, ventilated area you might even want to crack a window like if you're in a kitchen um, this stuff wants to even like stick to the bottom of the um, the glass jar so you can feel that with your spoon just keep stirring it up and keep working it slowly like this and uh, once you get it all in there continue to stir for a little bit you can even take a little bit of the lye water and put it up there so you get it out of this container here and when you're done with these containers you want to rinse them very very well with water under the sink um, I would wash them just let them sit under the sink for minutes at a time and uh, that will break down any of the remaining lye um, particles that are in this container but um, I wanted to show you guys uh, let me put this container aside about the temperature of the water because it's hard to see and understand I do have a thermometer here and you can see a little bit of the steam rising up but look at this temperature 
we're up at 182 degrees Fahrenheit and I didn't even heat this water this is straight out of the tap so we'll set that aside as it starts to cool down um, it'll become less cloudy more clear and the temperature that we want to add it to our soap to our oils is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 120 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit so what we're going to do in the meantime while this is cooling down is get our oils mixed up the olive oil is going to be our easiest because it's already a liquid form I'm going to put this on a bigger bowl and tear that off again so it's showing zero um, our recipe is calling for let's see olive oil we want 497.9 grams so basically 498 grams um, this is our primary ingredient really of the soap is the olive oil which is a classic ingredient used for hundreds of years in making soap um, it happens to be 64 percent of this recipe and you can see I'm already at 295 grams there so let me get it up 497 I don't want to go over and have to put this back in the jar so again go slowly and uh, let the scale settle you'll have a feel for how your own scale works after some time but I'm a little bit over there um, I'm just going to pipe pad a little bit of it out with some little pipettes so that I'm closer to the 498 and then we'll go ahead and add our, our coconut oil after that just a quick tip these disposable pipettes are really cheap they're plastic and uh, you can just go in here and you know you could use a turkey baster if you wanted to too but uh, it's just a way for me to suck out the ingredients and I'm not going to put them back into the um, the jar I'm just going to put this stuff down the drain but you can see right now I'm basically at 498 and we'll go on to the coconut oil all right I actually got a big container of coconut oil from uh, you got it from Costco um, but this coconut oil, they say, I mean, you know, it's 76 degree melting temperature actually if you read on the back it uh, it will tell you that so it tells you that it melts at 76 degrees Fahrenheit and in this case I need to get out um, let's see I have to get 280 grams of coconut oil in there so let me do that I'll stop the video here what I have to do with coconut oil is because it's still colder than that here in my house I'm gonna put it in the microwave for a couple not a couple minutes but uh, for a couple seconds to let it melt down and become liquid and then once it's liquid I'll add it into my main mixing bowl with the olive oil I uh, heated that coconut oil up on my stove actually instead of the microwave and uh, you can see how it looks now it's crystal clear just gonna dump that in there and uh, <clears throat> those oils are uh, one is hot one is cold they're gonna get a little bit uh, let's say mixed together for temperature and let's have a look at what that that checks out to be um, with my thermometer and it's not too bad it's only 84 degrees it hasn't gone up too much I was uh, heating it up on a low temperature low and slow here as far as my oil or I'm sorry my lye water over here we've got on the side I'm at about uh, 132 degrees right now so that's good um, everything's in the right range for temperature for mixing so uh, last step here is we're getting close to the end is we're gonna take our lye water slowly add that into the the mix and then we're going to use a stick blender and the stick blender will help mix all the ingredients together and what we're looking for is something that's called the trace now the trace is kind of when the chemical reaction is starting to take place and it will start to thicken up and when it starts to trace that's really the time that you need to do your final additives like putting in color putting in fragrances and things like that because trace means it's going to start to gel up and when it gels up you can't get it into the mold anymore because of uh, it's too too much of a I guess almost solid substance so let's start to mix it and I'll kind of show you um, as how it looks with the, the mixer you can see right now it kind of just drips right off of there and I tilt it a little bit get bubbles out of there and hit the go button and already you see it kind of cloud up a little bit it's just starting to trace a little bit but it's not quite there yet we're going to keep blending so just checking mm, not thickened up really much yet keep going Still 
got a little bit to go. I can feel that it's thickening up when I'm stirring by hand. Keep going. Okay, so see how there's a ring in the in the ground in the uh, when I pull it out, you can see that there's a an element left behind. That's showing trace. Yep, it's definitely starting to gel now. So now that this process, this chemical reaction is taking place, this is the time when you start to add in colors if you want, add in fragrance. In our case, I did uh, say I was gonna add some fragrance. This time I've got this pomegranate apple fragrance. Um, you can get a lot of different um, scents at this Crafter's Choice website, um, but it's a fragrance oil and they have colors there too. We're not gonna do any color, but fragrance oil, I'm gonna add about 27 grams of this stuff. I've already uh, pre-measured it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add it in now and mix it in. Now that we reach trace, we can put the soap uh, that's gelled up into our mold so that it can cure. So here's my silicone mold and I'm just gonna use a spatula to kinda make sure I get it all out. <clears throat> or most of it at least. Like I said, trial and error will give you the right amount for the size of mold that you have. When I was declaring how many oils I was using or the weight of the oils, what would work. You can see this mold is nearly full. So what we do next is you just take your spatula and you kind of uh, go like this to uh, try and work any air bubbles out that might be in there if there are any air bubbles. And if you had color and wanted to add multiple colors and layers, you sometimes do this too to kind of, uh, let's say, make streaks in the soap and give it some cool looks to it. You see some pretty unique and interesting soaps. Um, this one's just gonna have the basic color, of course, it's natural. And, uh, you know, once it cures up a little more, you could even swirl it to make little designs and stuff like that. But what I will do next then is I take this soap and I put it into a cooler. I put a piece of wax paper over it and then I put towels on top of it. The idea is you want it to cool down as slowly as possible. Um, it will take two to three days sitting in the cooler um, to really gel up and reach a point where I can peel away the silicone and get it out of there. But you do want to get it out after two or three days and let it uh, air cool in a well-cooled area. You can slice the soap at that point in time. I like to do that after the two or three days because it's soft, it's very easy to cut. And then you have to let it just air cure in the, uh, in a well ventilated area let's say for anywhere four to six weeks the soap gets harder with more time it'll stay soft if you start using it too early so um, just some tips there on how to do that so you can use crinkle cutter to cut it you can use a wire cutter there's lots of ways to cut soap there's many videos on that out there too so that's the basic process guys of cold process i hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions leave them in the comments area below give me a thumbs up if you liked it and hit subscribe for more videos from me when i have them released and know right away that i made them thanks for your time and stopping by this is john from john's diy playground have a great day